right, very good. So yeah, it's, I'm going to speak a little bit today about type B and type C algorithms for plan, treatment planning and patient-specific QA. And we'll start with a little bit of background and overview of types of algorithms. We'll get into how various algorithms work in patient plans and instances where they differ. So let's start with some background and just a little bit of the important physics definitions that, that'll be important as we go through this. So the first is TERMA, which is total energy released <coughs> per unit mass. A second concept is KERMA, which is the kinetic energy released to charged particles only per unit mass. And then there's collision KERMA, which is we're going to uh, call KERMA with the, uh, the subscript C here. So KERMA C, which is collision KERMA which is kinetic energy released and locally absorbed along the par charged particle tracks per unit mass. And so how these are related, you start with terma, which is like if you have a photon beam, it's the energy released per unit mass. And that is then divided into both kerma and any other energy that's imparted. This is the kinetic energy released to charged particles only per unit mass. And then the kerma is then further subdivided into collision kerma, which is the kinetic energy released along the charged particle tracks through collisions. And then also radiative losses are also part of kerma, and those two are kind of combined to make kerma. So collision kerma and then radiative kerma. And then there's also karma, which is intent and actions of an individual influence the future of that individual. And while karma is very important, for life, it's not necessarily important for dose calculation. All right, so these are some important definitions um, and a few more, or just to, just to kind of go in a little further detail. So we have our, our attenuation coefficients here. There's the mass attenuation coefficient the, and also the energy absorption down here, co attenuation coefficients. And those are related to terma, kerma, and collision kerma as well, as outlined in this in this table. All right, another important concept is charged particle equilibrium, which occurs when there's a steady state between the charged particles entering and leaving a region of dosimetric interest. And so there's a couple of assumptions, mainly that the photon fluence is unchanged over the range of the charged particles and it's essentially that the charged particle fluence and spectrum isn't really changed throughout that volume. The volume is small enough. And so it's basically charged particle equilibrium is an energy balance in three-dimensional space. So I guess you could say that charged particle equilibrium is collision karma karma. So maybe karma is important for dose calculation. Dose calculation from photon beams can be broken into a two-step process. The first is kind of radiation transport, which is where the photons interact in the medium to impart kinetic energy to charged particles. This is really the terma step of, of the process. And then there's the charged particles who have been given energy. They deposit energy throughout events along the track. So that's the dose portion. That's kind of the dose step or dose deposition step. When charged particle equilibrium exists, then terma is proportional to dose, and dose is equal to collision karma. However, in absence of charged particle equilibrium, such as at tissue interfaces and beam edges, this simplification is invalid, and the two steps must be more clearly distinguished. All right, so for so this this applies this concept applies for kind of all photon beams, including kind of kilovoltage and megavoltage, but we're going to focus a lot on megavoltage beams obviously, since that's what we treat with typically. And so charged particle equilibrium for a megavoltage, megavoltage photon beams, at, in, at in, megavoltage photon energies, the photon fluence starts to be attenuated over the range of the electrons set in motion. So we don't actually achieve charged particle equilibrium, sadly. However, transient charged particle equilibrium is achieved along the beam path. And it, with transient charged particle equilibrium, the dose is proportional to collision karma rather than equal to it. And in this table at the bottom here, you can see that for various megavoltage photon energies, the percent attenuation of the photon beam equal to the maximum electron range. And so you can see for you know very, a very small energy, 
there's really no attenuation of that photon beam over the range of the electrons. But for, it's, you know, as you get up to 1, 10, and 30, you get more significant attenuation of the photon beam as, as a function of the range of the electrons. So what this means is that, you know, as this number gets higher, you're less able to achieve charged particle equilibrium and you end up achieving transient charged particle equilibrium. And while charged particle equilibrium is a three-dimensional phenomenon, it's often separated into two components. There's a longitudinal direction along the beam axis, this blue line here, and lateral directions perpendicular to the beam axis. And so let's talk a little bit about in the longitudinal dimension, the, tar the transient charged particle equilibrium. So there's no charged particle equilibrium at the surface because energy from the electrons set in motion is deposited downstream and you don't really have the same thing happening upstream. So because you have air as opposed to water. And so con there are contaminant electrons that exist on the surface, but they've got to be treated separately and are really dependent on the treatment head and accessories. And it's not enough to achieve charged particle equilibrium in that area. So that's why we have a buildup region at the beginning of our treatment beam is because we don't really have that transient charged particle equilibrium at the surface. So, but it is achieved after the buildup region. And there's a good illustration of this. You can see that for this photon energy, the dose goes up, hits this maximum, and then attenuates. And that's the dose. Whereas if you look at the KERMA, like this collision, collision kerma, it is kind of just a exponential function here with no buildup region because that's where the energy is transferred. But then the energy is actually transferred downstream. So you actually have to get a little bit downstream before you actually get to that dose. So because those two curves do not align here, that's why it's called transient charged particle equilibrium. That is kind of in the longitudinal axis. Let's talk a little bit about the lateral dimension. So for a photon beam in water, the lateral charged particle equilibrium holds except near the field edges. And I would say, yeah, at the field edge, electrons are scattered outside of the field are not replaced with equal electrons scattering back into the field. So that's why we get a penumbra. Now, a penumbra has two aspects. It has a physical aspect because the there's a physical size of the target. But it also has a dosimetric aspect, which is what we're talking about here, which is due to the electron transport and loss of the transient charged particle equilibrium. And so when you, your, your penumbra is really a combination of those two, it's actually bigger than either comp aspect combined on its own. And as you can imagine, as that field gets smaller and smaller, the areas on the edges where you have transient you don't have charged particle equilibrium as those meet and you don't have any area in the middle with charged particle equilibrium, you end up with very kind of complex dosimetric situations where it gets much more difficult to get an accurate dose calculation. You need a much more sophisticated calculation for that. Now let's get into our dose calculation algorithms. Dose calculation algorithms can be classified into three types, A, B, and C. So type A is models that do not consider changes in electron transport. Type B are models that in an approximate way consider changes in electron transport. And type C are algorithms in which the physics generating the dose absorption process is rigorously accounted for. And we will get into each one of these. So let's start with type A. Type A, this is where models that do not consider electron changes in electron transport so algorithms in this group are basically like a dose hand calculation and simple pencil beam convolution algorithms where inhomogeneities are accounted for only along the one dimensional path length along the fan lines. And so these, these techniques assume charged particle equilibrium and they ignore heterogeneities outside of the beam path. They may have a correction along the beam path, but not really. They just ignore anything outside of the beam path. So very simple calculations. We, we've used these forever because they're simple to do correction-based methods, so and so forth. And so those inhomogeneity corrections for a type A algorithm basically uses a density scaling, where you scale the inhomogeneity based on an equivalent depth or equivalent path length. And and so you, it's just basically measured. And so if you, if you have something that's more dense, that's basically equivalent to having a longer range of tissue that it's going through. And you kind of just you make an assumption that way. And one thing to note about this is that it's actually the very similar or the same concept 
that is used for inhomogeneity correction for type B algorithms. Only in type B algorithms, this correction is applied more than just along the beam path. All right, type B algorithms. Let's go into type B algorithms. So here, these are definite models that in an approximate way consider changes in lateral electron transport. So some algorithms that included, are included in this group are pencil beam calculation algorithms, which incorporate approximate corrections for lateral electron transport, such as the anisotropic analytical algorithm, or AAA. It also includes collapsed cone, convolution, and multigrid superposition. And most of these are what we would call convolution superposition techniques. So you start with affluence, like your, your term right here, and you convolve it with a dose kernel, and then you end up with your dose. And often, you know, the, there's very, you know, simple to very complex ways of doing this. A dose from each component can often be modeled and separately uh, convolved and then and then added up for the final dose. And, and so this may be separated, for instance, into primary photon beam, the head scatter, the photons from the head scatter, and then like an electron contamination component. So something like that, you kind of, you do the same process for each of these components. You may have like a broad source for your head scatter, but a, you know, a small kind of tight, a target for your primary beam, so on and so forth. And then you kind of add it all up. The dose kernels are often predetermined using Monte Carlo. So this can be very confusing because when we talk about a Monte Carlo dose calculation algorithm, we're not talking about a type B algorithm. However, some of the components used in a type B algorithm usually are de defined ahead of time using Monte Carlo. So you define what that, what that, or you actually, when, when you use this, you're not really using any Monte Carlo, but ahead of time in prep, when preparing this algorithm, the dose kernels have been determined using, typically using Monte Carlo. <clears throat> And so when you go to do inhomogeneity corrections for type B algorithms, this is also modeled similar to type A algorithms as a change or scaling of the density. So all medium is assumed to be water, but is scaled up and down based on the density. The attenuation of the photons in a layer of tissue is determined using the radiological path length, thickness of each tissue inhomogeneity. So this is called density scaling, basically. And the scaling is done relative to the density of water because that's kind of the standard is that this, we calculate dose in water and when it's not water, we, we adjust it based on that. Often charged particle equilibrium or charged particle equilibrium is assumed implicitly with these methods. Since most interactions for, for in the megavoltage range are Compton events, density scaling is based on the electron density rather than the mass density. So basically you take your CT you get electron density, and then whatever that number is relative for any voxel, whatever that number is relative to water, you basically scale your, your attenuation based on that for your inhomogeneity correction. You're assuming, you're assuming basically that everything is water. It's just water with different densities when you're doing this type of inhomogeneity correction. Since type B algorithms often use super, a convolution superposition technique for dose calculation, the convolution kernels are scaled by density to account for inhomogeneity. So this is what this looks like. You have, you know, if you have some air section, basically the kernel itself will get scaled based on that density. And so you get a change in how that kernel will look. And so when you put it all together, this is kind of what those corrections look like. You can see here, if you have um, your fluence is fairly, basically not really changed much, but then once you've convolved it into dose, you get kind of this broadening of the penumbra area out here, so on and so forth. And then you, you may end up actually with less dose, maybe in the center here, based on the based, based <coughs> on the density. All right, so just to get, go over one example for the type E algorithms, AAA. So AAA is, you know, it's a 3D convolution superposition. The beam entering the patient is split into beamlets, each model with several monoenergetic scatter kernels. Kernels are pre-calculated by Monte Carlo and water. Separate convolutions for there's separate convolutions for all components, primary, extrafocal, extra electron contamination. If you have like a wedge in the beam, then that's also included. The scatter kernels are scaled with dense, the density of the patient. 
So assume the photon and electron scatter can be separated into lateral and depth components. The lateral dose deposition is modeled with six exponential curves, enabling an analytic convolution. And then density scaling is performed by dividing into 16 rays that diverge from the kernel origin using the radioactive path depth. All right, so that's kind of how A is structured. And, and depending on the algorithm, there's kind of similar things that might be. Done. Dr. Adamson, I have a quick yeah. question, if that's okay. Yeah. So I was just wondering for, for separate convolutions for all components, are they doing different types of comp convolution uh, each time at this location? Uh or, or it's just mixed in within the same kernel? So no, these would be separate separate kernels, right? So the kernels themselves will look different based on the Monte Carlo. And so the convolutions are happening separately. And then when you, when you, and you just get kind of a final dose sum of each of those individual kernels convolutions. I see. And then we add the scatter kernels after that as well. Yes, yeah, that's right. Okay. okay, thank you. All right. And then, so just looking at how, how they handle inhomogeneity. So these are different algorithms. The first one here is actually kind of a type A, and then the, the other two are type B. You could see where they, so the, for the energy transport for a pencil beam algorithm, it's along the ray line and then laterally for A, energy transport is along the ray line and laterally 16 directions. And then for superposition convolution, the energy transport is along approximately 100 directions. And the kernel scaling is only along the ray line for pencil beam. It is in 17 directions for triple A. And then it's in all directions for convolution, superposition convolution. So you can see kind of the, just the difference in how these handle these. And so you actually can get a difference in accuracy in these situations for even different types of type B algorithm. And just here's here's some examples of how they work in lung. So here's, this is a 6 MV dose curve at 10 CM depth in water for a narrow 1 CM by 5 CM field. So this is kind of a very small field, kind of a difficult dose calculation setting. You have a lung region and you can see here the pencil beam kind of does not really hand, it handles the, the water situations very well, but in the lung region here, you end up with kind of an overestimation at the central axis. And then you can see that it underestimates the lateral dose spread. Whereas the superposition, the, the collapse cone method actually does a pretty good job in that situation and is very close to Monte Carlo. So, Different type B algorithms can do better or worse, just depending on how how finely they're modeling the inhomogeneity and kind of searching out and spreading out that do that dose kernel. All right, so that's kind of a summary of type B. Let's go to type C. So type C algorithms. These are algorithms in which the physics generating the dose absorption process is rigorously accounted for. And there's two such algorithms. Well, there's a lot of algorithms. There's two types of algorithms. One is Monte Carlo simulation, where individual particle tracks are modeled. And then the other is linear Boltzmann transform equation solvers, which is kind of, you can think of as kind of an analytic or numerical solution equivalent to, to Monte Carlo. And just to go into a little more detail on those, Monte Carlo, you know, we're, we're all very familiar with this. This is where you have particle tracks that are mo modeled, you have, and you put together a model of the linear accelerator head of the anatomy and and it, obviously the the head model may be simplified into just kind of after you've modeled it you get like a a target and an affluence or so on and so forth and then and a spectrum photon spectrum or it could you know involve involve like the inherent electrons on the target and then this inherently accounts for situations where transient charge particle equilibrium does not apply because now you're just looking at individual particles and in order to get better statistics, and so often these have an, a cutoff energy below which events are not simulated, just when you get really low KV energies, and then also more simulated events equals better statistics. So you want to improve the statistics, just simulate more events. And so this is kind of our gold standard for dose calculation. The only reason it's not used everything is that it's, it's slow, right? Because you have to model every individual event and, and get good statistics. Although... And, and you'll you see it more, it's more and more common in your day-to-day -day dose calculation, including 
independent dose, the independent calculation afterwards, a lot of new algorithms. Monte Carlo. Linear Boltzmann transfer equation solvers, also called grid-based Boltzmann solvers. These are new numerically solves the coupled Boltzmann linear trans radiation transport equations using interaction cross sections for relevant materials. And it des <clears throat> describes the behavior of particles as they interact with an object across spatial energy and directional domains. The final result of the calculations is the electron fluent spectrum in each voxel. Dose is then determined by multiplying the electron fluence with restricted electron stopping material at that voxel integrated over the electron spectrum and divided by the density at the point of calculation. So this is kind of an anal analytical equivalent to Monte Carlo. And here we don't have individual events that are being simulated, individual tar particles. Instead, if we want better statistics, we would use a smaller calculation grid. And so the smaller that grid, kind of the better the statistic. And the main example here of this type of algorithm is Acuros. All right. So how type C algorithms handle tissue inhomogeneity is fundamentally different than a type B algorithm. Here, the radiation transport is performed in the materials derived by anatomical information. Uh, the tissue segmented, there's a tissue segmentation that's based on the density ranges relative, related to the Hounsfield units read into the patient's CT set. So, and you can see here's a table for Acuros where the, uh, depending on the Hounsfield unit, the density within the Hounsfield unit, it basically each voxel is assigned a certain material. And then the, you know, if it's Monte Carlo, the particle tracks going through that voxel then are interacting with that material itself. So that elemental composition, which is which is assigned. And so then you have the different, you know, for that, that elemental composition, you'll have basically different cross sections uh, for photons and, and electrons in that in that voxel. And that's basically how you're you're modeling the heterogeneity. So it's kind of inherently modeled just by using those cross sections of the elemental composition and same goes for Acuros. Acuros does all right and just looking at the difference between Monte Carlo and Acuros just showing you know very you know good agreement between those for some situations here where you have water bone lung and then water again so let's talk a little bit about kind of clinically how these work in patient plans and instances where they differ and I think just to start let's just kind of go over in very specific detail the differences in how these two handle inhomogeneities. Oh, actually, no, I think back. First, let's talk a little bit about just some, some kind of clinical examples showing, you know, some differences. So here's AAA. You can see so a lung area there in the center. For normal lung, a fairly good match. And it, what we have here is Monte Carlo, Acuros, and then AAA. You can see kind of for this very light lung, some really low density kind of an overestimation by AAA. And then in bone here, actually, all of them are pretty good, but maybe a slight difference. Now, this is for AAA itself, collapsed cone, convolution. I don't have it in here, but matches much better with, with, the, with the Monte Carlo. So this these differences that we're showing here are just due to radiation transport. This is not due to some of the kind of other differences that we'll talk about here in a second. And and just how, you know, basically how well you're modeling the the, the radiation transport. And similar here for this one's for 6x and this is for 15x. And here just showing some profiles showing similar things. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the fundamental differences and and subtleties that that become important. So type B algorithms consider only changes in electron density when accounting for a tissue in, in homogeneity. Because you're basically assuming everything is water just with you know dense different densities. However, atomic number also affects dose. The, and so it, how that affects dose, we'll go into a little more detail here. So first, there's a change in photon attenuation. The proportion of photoelectric Compton and pair production changes with Z, with atomic number. And we'll talk about what that means, the implications of that. Um, there's a change in collision kerma. So the mass, mass energy absorption coefficient depends on atomic number, thus changing collision kerma locally within the medium. And then there's a change in electron transport. So there's increased interactions with nucleus, producing a local variation in charged particles' angular, angular distributions. 
And so this can affect charged particle equilibrium because hot and cold spots in the vicinity of tissue interfaces. And then just to, again, to reemphasize, since type B algorithms assume all medium is water with scale density, they do not account for these effects. So these are basically a fundamental difference between type C algorithms and type B algorithms because type C algorithms will inherently account for these factors, but type B algorithms will not. Even though they're both accounting for the change in electron density and, and, and modeling the radiation transport for the most part, these kind of more subtle effects are, are not really accounted for for type B algorithms, but they are for type C. And just a little bit more detail here about the first of those. So change in photon attenuation. So the proportion of photoelectric Compton and pair production changes with atomic number. On the left, you can see that, you know this plot for water versus lead, which is kind of an extreme example. But you can see there that the Compton area really has shrunk. And now photoelectric and pair production become much more important. So in a situation where you have kind of a high Z material, you, you will have more pair production which will actually affect the spectral distribution and range of the secondary charged particles. So that is an effect that you would, mod you would see modeled for type C algorithms, but not type B algorithms. So let's talk about change in collision kerma, which is, this is one that is uh, very important and can be uh, counterintuitive in, in, the, in the effects, if you don't know what to look for here. So here, the mass energy absorption coefficient depends on atomic number, thus changing collision kerma locally within the medium. Dose is scaled higher or lower, more or less by constant value within the, the non-water equivalent medium. So for instance, this is a very common, commonly known for KV beams, where if you have dose to you know, soft tissue versus water or bone versus water, you will have just basically some constant value that you multiply the, the dose by to get the dose in that medium. And this, you know, you can see this is actually a fairly big effect uh, for KV energies where you get kind of big dose differences in the medium relative to water. And for KV energies, you can assume charged particle equilibrium because the charged particles do not have a very large range and the dose is basically deposited on the spot. So those, those, so it's very easy to just kind of apply a, you know, a constant value depending on your, the spectrum of your energy and your, and your material your atomic number to, to know what that, the difference between dose to water to dose to medium. And it can be significant. For mega voltage beams, there it, it's a much more subtle, but it, there is an effect. And for soft tissue, this results in kind of a small systematic difference, like 1% between dose calculated to water, dose calculated to medium, uh, based on basically whether, you know, basically the, the dose to water versus dose to muscle is about a 1% difference. <laughs> for bone, there's an, the enhancement factor could be used, so you could multiply it by some some factor. However, from a lot of situations, charged particle equilibrium does not hold for small bone regions, so that may or may not be accurate. And so, an important thing to note about this is that this effect is for dose deposition, not for transport. So this is not really affecting. If you're saying that dose to medium, you know that your your dose is changing to your tissue, your dose to tissue is 1% different than water. That does not mean that the, the photon beam is one attenuated 1% 1 more than water. It just means that the dose is higher because this is, you know, this is basically the dose disposition step, not the radiation transport step. And this is kind of what this looks like in, in bones. You can see we've got a bone layer here. You've got water before and after. And depending on how this is modeled, you'll get a different answer within the bone. But the attenuation of this beam within the water before and after the bone looks basically the same. And, and so just how this is modeled within the bone is basically, you'll see, you know, the dose is higher or lower, depending on whether you're looking at dose to water, dose to medium, depending on your algorithm. And this is, this is basically do that dose deposition step and the change in collision kerma within the local medium. And another thing to note here is that you'll actually see kind of a small peak before and after this kind of, let me go back up just a second here. This is kind of that change in electron transport, which might lead to kind of hot spots, cold spots based on some changes in the electron transport, changing your charge, you basically lose kind of charged particle equilibrium at the interfaces 
All right. And if you look at lung, lung is actually, you know, much more subtle effects than, than bone uh, for something like this, because basically you don't have this big chain, elemental change. So you're not getting dose difference there. All right. Looking at the change in electron transport. So here we have increased interactions with the nucleus can provide local variation in the charged particles, angular distributions. This affects charged particle equilibrium, causing hot hot spots, cold spots in the vicinity of tissue interfaces. And this is just showing from a very old paper. You know, if you look at the dose at the interface, depending on your energy, you can you end up with kind of these situations where you have a very, you know, a dose enhancements or dose kind of cold spot and just depends on your length, depend your your distance from that interface depends on your the thickness of the of the material depends on your energy. Tissue and homogeneity, just a little bit more details here about type C algorithms. So due to the assignment of voxels to specific materials, type C algorithms inherently account dose to meet, calculate dose to medium as opposed to dose to water, which is what type B algorithms will inherently do. So you may have in your planning system an algorithm that calculates to water and one that calculates to medium. And so that can be confusing and can lead to kind of a 1% systematic difference in dose. Some type C algorithms will allow reporting dose to water. For instance, with Acuros, there's a post-processing step using restricted electron stopping power for water is used in conjunction with the originally calculated electron fluence that was determined in the media. So in this case, the radiation transport will still be in the medium, but the dose deposition would be done into water. And this is an estimate of the dose to water assuming the voxel is a Bragg gray cavity of water surrounded by various meat. And yeah, so this is important to note that, you know, even when you're doing dose to water in with the type C algorithm, you may still have your, your radiation transport may still be in medium. It's just kind of after the fact you're calculating it to water. Similar to if you were to you know, apply some factor to get dose to medium from type, it's kind of the opposite of doing this, this with type B. And then so, Ways to convert between dose to different mediums for large heterogeneity volumes, that the most appropriate way is to use kind of a mass energy absorption ratios, whereas for small heterogeneity volumes, using stopping power ratios would be most appropriate. So if you think about Brad Gray theory, this is whether, you know, the the everything the dose in the in the medium is man is dominated by the photon interactions or the electron interaction. And and so basically you have different situations for different sizes of those volumes. So it's there there may not be like a, a one size fits all answer here and for 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 converting. And and by converting you may you may or may not have, you know, it may be a little bit messy as to what the you know, you, you can't just kind of easily convert one to the other and without just some subtleties there about whether you know what the accuracy is for, for some of these. Again, the effect is pretty small for most situations. And so this task group from AAPM with some recommendations on whether to report dose to water or dose to muscle. So just to give a few highlights here, historically, water of the LINAC calibration was often converted to dose to muscle for patient calculations through a manual application of a 0.99 dose to water to dose to muscle correction factor applied during the LINAC clinical reference calibration. However, many current treatment planning systems, dose calculation algorithms, approximately provide dose to muscle tissue, making application of a manual scaling unnecessary. So if the TPS does not account for the difference between dose to water and dose to muscle, then TPS reference dose scaling is warranted. So their recommendations here on the right is that one, the linear accelerated clinical reference calibration should always be conducted in water and reported as dose to water not as, and not dose to tissue following the current protocols for TGP-1. Manual modification of dose to water to dose to tissue should be done on an algorithm by algorithm basis through the treatment planning system reference dose specification. And then a qualified medical physicist should identify the appropriate correction from table one, which I have an excerpt from in the next slide, and define the treatment planning system reference dose uh, by multiplying this correction factor and the measured dose in water. So here's here's a, a table you can see basically for different planning systems it, there's different algorithms and it has the type of algorithm that it is and then it also shows 
the dose reported by the planning system, is it primarily dose to water versus dose to tissue? So for instance, we have Varian here. If you look down here, you know, we have AAA and PPC and Acuros, and some of them report dose to water, dose to tissue. And so they have kind of a recommended correction factor that's applied in the reference calibration in water in the planning system. So you tell the planning system what what your reference dose is for calibration, and that's different whether it's primarily dose to water or dose to tissue. All right, so let's just look at the clinical effect in a few organs or few treatment sites. The clinical effect in head and neck, this is a paper showing, you can see on the basically the clinical effect in head and neck. You can see on the right the dose to the PTV as a function of the percent of the PTV that's cartilage or bone. And, and this is looking at dose to water versus dose to medium. So you can see here, you know, Acuros versus AAA and more cartilage or bone in the PTV, you get kind of an underdosing or a less dose as calculated by Acuros versus AAA. So dose to medium results in significant reductions in dose to bone in the high dose PTVs. Reported GTV was, was reduced but by a lower magnitude. Reduced coverage metrics should be expected for these patients with IMRT with dose reductions limited to regions of bone. So basically your bone areas, you may see less dose for these head and neck cases if you're using dose to medium versus dose to water. And here's just some more uh, figures showing the same thing. So this is showing basically here's AAA, here's Acuros, here's the dose to the PTV, just showing it going down here. and here is just showing kind of an example of that. You can see kind of the dose there. All right, so our results show that the same monitor units and MLC patterns recalculating these with the Acuros and dose to medium resulted in a reduction in dose in the soft tissue by 1% and bone by approximately 5% component within the high dose. PT. All right, clinical effect in lung. So here's this this study looks at looks at the clinical effect in lung, and you can see here in lung now you have kind of a low low density, but you don't have a huge change in your atomic elemental composition, right? Because you don't have as much bone unless you're next to the ribs, and so a lot of the issues that you a lot of the differences you may see often, especially for AAA versus Acuros, have more to do with the radiation transport. Then they have to do with the different element, how, how it's handling dose to water versus dose to medium. And so you can see here that these differences here show basically like lower dose for the PTV, higher dose for the ribs, and so on and so forth as you go down, go down the list. Dose distribution of that, so you can, this is AAA, this is Acuros dose to medium, and Acuros dose to water. Uh, you can see here the max dose in the rib there or next to the neck right here is lower for dose to medium but then once you convert that to dose to water you actually end up with a higher dose in the bone so so lots of if you have bone you may see a fairly big effect going from medium to water but it's actually very subtle going from medium to water in in lung or in soft tissue and then any other you know dose differences you see in that low density is probably due to just how how well the algorithm is handling the, the radiation transport in the low density. And yeah, just some of the conclusions. So this is another paper, recent paper, looking at, you know, if you're switching between AAA to Acuros for like lung SBRT, you can see, diff, you know, differences in the dose distribution. And so how do you kind of prescribe, how, how do you make that transition without a systematic change in prescribed dose? So for instance, the conclusions here is that when, transi when transitioning from collapse cone, collapse convolution superposition to Acuros, basically, dose calculation <coughs> for lung SBRT, maintaining a PTV coverage-based normalization generally results in increased <coughs> dose relative to the convolution superposition and increased reported target and OAR dose. In cases where PTV normalization results in unacceptably high doses to targets or OARs, normalizing based on ITV coverage can, can be considered to maintain similar target coverage as, as AAA. So, you know, there's lots of different, and, and again, this effect here is mainly due to how the, the 
algorithm is handling the radiation transport and how well it's modeling the heterogeneities, the low, you know, the low density, it's not as much the, the dose to water, dose to medium. Those, those are much are fairly subtle effects in lungs. This is another paper. This is looking at basically AAA and showing that um, if you, you know, you basically, you know, if you use your free breathing, you're, you're going to see kind of a, a higher density, higher density surrounded by lung. If you look at the average, you get kind of this averaged out. If you look at the ITV, you get this dose that's kind of high in all in this entire area. But in reality, you have kind of this moving tumor. And so how's the what's the best way to get kind of accurate dose from AAA with a moving tumor where you you have kind of this situation except for it's moving back and forth where normally we would think of this situation as being an accurate depiction because it, if it basically accounts for amount of time spent by the tumor in each of these areas. And so they looked at these kind of density overrides where you override the PTV or you do some sort of a hybrid override and just showing that hybrid override can improve the match with measurement. So that's something you could look at if, as a potential method for kind of getting accurate dose in, in a situation. And we looked at a couple of clinical situations. Just in conclusion, we have three types of dose calculation ca calculation algorithms, A, B, and C. A is what we would do with a hand calc. B is kind of typically convolution superposition, where you have relative, you have dose in water, and you're just using density scaling of that water to account for heterogeneities. And then type C, which rigorously accounts for the radiation trans electron transport in the medium and accounts for elemental compositions of the of the medium. Modern planning systems use type B and type C. Yeah, again, type B inherently calculates and reports dose to water. Type C inherently calculates and reports dose to medium. These inherent differences lead to some predictable clinical effects. Systematic dose difference about 1% for soft tissue, looking at dose to water versus dose to medium, and around 5% per bone. And effects in lung are due mainly to the lack of CPE rather than a difference in all right, and that is all I have for today. Thank you very much.